sweet. Yeah, I probably shouldn't be using the flamethrower this much, but I don't really care. Shazam! Let's go freeze this thing. So yeah, I hear you, Barry. I uh, I too did not like the late uh, Ada area because uh, I didn't like uh, I didn't like her little scanner thing. Her little scanner thing kind of was stupid, and I didn't like that it was like a brand. It was like a new video, like from a video game standpoint. It was like here's a new thing that you can do now. It's like a new ability, and you have to do it now. And it's like I understand the tension it added in some of those scenes, but it added a lot of frustration for me because I'm like, I go into a room and Mr. X is coming, and I'm like, where do I scan? And I'm like looking for the area, and then I'm scanning, but it's in real time. Everything else in this game is not in real time. But the scanning is. And I'm like, that's annoying as shit. Burn all the things. That's right. I don't like the little mini games of Ada Scanner. Sherry Stealth, the alligator boss fight. The alligator boss fight was frustrating. We died like three times because the game was like, don't just run in a straight line. I'm like, okay. Like, I, I don't know. That seemed like the logical thing to do at first because I saw, because right when we started running, there's this big pile of garbage. And our character kind of brushed against it, kind of pushed him out to the middle, at least, or at least maybe I just instinctively moved towards the middle. But it felt like it was, it wanted me to run down the middle. Like, it almost felt like the game was directing me to. So I was like, all right, I'll just run down the middle. And if any trash bubbles up on one side, I'll just run to the other side so it won't slow me down. And it's like, no, alligator eats you. And I'm like, okay. So then when you're recharging or when you're dying and waiting to come back, it's like, go shift left to right. So I shift left, the alligator comes, and then, uh, you know, and it, and then I, like, shift right. And right at the second, as I'm shifting right, I get against the wall. I'm running against the wall, and it eats me. And I'm like, how did it know I was going right? And it was just like, and then, so then it's like, oh, well, the alligator's going to move in a direction, you know, forward, left, or right. And it's like, okay, game, I get it. So I have to figure this out trial by error, and it's just annoying the shit out of me. So, yeah, that, I had definitely some <laughs> criticism there. I know it's all intentional. So it's like, it's, it's easy to go like, oh, that sucks. They don't know what they're doing. It's like, I know they did that intentionally and I know you know that too but it doesn't make me like it anymore right. the the sherry thing I didn't mind so much because I thought that was a an interesting like the chief irons is a nasty character and so I was kind of interested to see how far they would go with them, considering how much they insinuated in the original Resident Evil 2, like how he, you know, kidnapped young women, and he's, he, like, he got tired, excuse me, like, got tired of hunting, um, you know, animals, and was like, all right, I, now I have a human, and she's beautiful, and I'm, and I'm a creep, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stuff her, like a, like, taxidermy and stuff, and I just remember being like, wow, that's insane, the first time they did that. But then, in this game, I felt like they kind of pulled back. They showed the, the mayor's daughter, but there's no line of her going... There's no, like, big monologue of him going, like, it's the mayor's daughter. She's so pretty and perfect, and, like, they don't really let that actor, like, play the creepiness up. And I think that there's so many things. I think that just, I don't know, just adds to the, the world you're building. Um, same with, like, like I said earlier, Leon and Claire in the first game... 
they meet each other in the stars room so every time Leon and Ada do something together there's still a scene where Claire shows up and sees Leon to kind of keep that connection going so that at the end they tell each other through walkie because in the stars office they give each other walkies and they're like hey I went through a manhole meet me back there and you can walk that way and that'll lead you to where I am uh, I'm gonna keep moving forward and it's like okay and then so there's constant communication between them even though it's only like two or three scenes but they're pivotal scenes um, and uh, and they and they keep that narrative going and they also don't make it seem like it's just a random coincidence that both Leon and Claire end up at the same place at the end which this game does like at least from the, the Claire standpoint it seems like it just seemed like oh Leon just magically ends up in the same place <laughs> like that Claire does uh, whereas in the original game they kind of direct each other to to meet up there let's just train this out we oh, did was that oh we oh because we killed him three times he legit died this time wow I never seen one of those yeah he moved did it even mention the mayor I don't think so I think maybe in a journal they mentioned uh, like when he was talking about like I you know I hunted a bear and then I hunted like a wolf in Russia and then I hunted a pig here in the US or something and it was like oh you're like Who, who's the pig and the and it's like obvious the pig is you know the, the female human he had but yeah there's like a lot of little weird continuity things like they it's like they went out of their way to try to tie in like in a a Lisa Trevor thing with kids and like how they're being experimented on and stuff but then and they tied that to irons to kind of make him seem like a creepy that kind of creepy guy um, and I don't know it's just but then they don't like really pull the trigger on most of it and then you see the mayor's daughter just laying in the middle of the room and she gets crushed there's no like kind of payoff with that story I don't know there's just like a lot of things that I was just kind of like it's like yeah I just said three times as an estimate average I don't think it is three times I think it's a random number of times like a headshot oh okay gotcha well for him it was three because I think we put him down going up the stairs then back down then up again so, so worked out it worked out you, you weren't a liar there Barry hmm Yeah, that one died on the first one. That one on the ground back there. Dispensing solution now. It's a bummer that it kills all the plants, but it doesn't kill the ivies because when you come in here, there's still like two more ivies that jump out at you. And I'm like, oh, they're not dead. That did the trick. Awesome. Remember in, uh, I think it was the Nintendo 64 version of Resident Evil 2, that room where you have to put the two thumbprints? Um, I think that room is, uh, I think that room is, in the 64 version, had a, they, they added hunters to that room. And they were just like, oh yeah, this random room, we're just going to put two hunters in there or something. And I remember that freaking wall. Oh shit. Shit. That should slow all of them down. <laughs> nice. Uh, that didn't happen in our player game right oh come on damn it not a knife I don't want to lose a knife
We're going to save. <laughs> Iron versus Predator versus Craven the Hunter. Nice. Well, the thing about Irons is a lot of his things that he hunted, he purchased. Like he actually didn't hunt some of them. Um, the thing about Irons is like he, what's neat, neat if you want to read too much into it is that he's, he's kind of like uh, they, they, they created him very specifically like it's like oh Irons is a Irons is like a protector of women he's a leader you know has his hands with the into the orphanage and how that's run and he leads like this group that you know helps battered women and stuff and then he's just like a, a creepy guy who batters women um so uh so it's like I, I feel like that's kind of like the, the angle they play with him is that he's just like a real creep um and everything he says he does he actually does the opposite you know so uh so when he says he hunts things it's like yeah he probably didn't really hunt them he probably just bought them we'll take all the we have all that magnum ammo too we'll save that for the boss boss which apparently is going to be the same boss we fought before so that was one of my complaints too was that in Res Resident Evil 2 the original when you played Leon you got uh, like Leon A you got like William Burke in form 1 and 3 and then if you did Leon B or Claire B you got Burke in forms 2 and 4 and then 5 at the secret ending um, so it's kind of like you know, this one doesn't doesn't have that um, so far, or at least I haven't. If the differences are, they're very subtle. Like I've the the first Birkin we fought looked exactly like the first Birkin that we fought with Leon and Claire. All right. So even the, so, there's here's where like the stories are a little different. Leon's here because Ada told him this is where the G virus sample is. Claire only came here to cure Sherry. Oh, and got our videotapes. The videotapes aren't as effective as uh, the videotapes in other Resident Evil games. Like even though the one in Resident Evil One, the remake of One, that one kind of was like meh. Um, because it was just like you just saw Kenneth get eaten by a zombie and you're like oh okay whatever it was nothing major uh, just like a fun little easter eggy thing kind of stuff but uh, in this one I like it a little more because they, they make it part of the narrative um, where like uh, like in the first game Annette just kind of told you know the story of William and how like people came for the G virus. She just confessed everything to Ada, and you're kind of like, why is she just confessing everything? Like she's just openly telling Ada everything. Like why would she do that to a stranger? Um, and it was clear it was just bad exposition, but uh, and it was more for the audience than it was for Ada. Oh, that can go away now. Combine that. That can go away. I don't even know if we'll watch that tape, but yeah, we'll, it's right here. Why not? Why don't we watch it real quick? What was the note from Chris in the Stars Office? Was that him trying to throw off the scent that he was chasing Umbrella, or was it by someone else? No. Yes, you're right. That was that's my thought when I first read it. Was that um? So basically, they find out that Chief Irons is like single-handedly keeping them from from their evidence from getting out there so and they're being put on like you know they're being threatened to be fired and all this other stuff and Chris wants to get you know actually expose Umbrella so he lies and says he's going to take vacation time and go on vacation and that's when he's like sending secret messages to like Barry like hey don't don't come out here Barry there's too many women here and I don't want to fight you for them or whatever that's just Chris just saying hey like don't come to don't come out here yet. I'm still looking for, you know, whatever. So he's using code. But yeah. 
It's uh, it's not him actually like talking about babes and stuff or someone impersonating Chris. It's Chris just trying to if that letter ever got seen by anyone else at the RPD who might be an umbrella employee, it's just to protect him and his team basically. So your instincts are right. I also like this. This ad addition is neat. The whoever Jay Martinez is, he opened fire even though there was a gun being pulled on him. So that was the right thing to do. Um, but the other teammates, you kind of see that they're not happy about that. So, so I wonder if that plays out in the fourth survivor scenario a little bit more. I'm also interested in this, this one here, Sender, B-E. Um, he talks about how their company is the most well-funded in the whole United States. I'm trying to remember whose initials those could be from Resident Evil lore. But that's it's clear, like I think I mentioned it, or I will be in my history of Resident Evil videos, where the the plan like Birkin and Wesker had plans to betray Oswell E. Spencer, but then the plans got screwed up when the outbreak happened at the Arclay Mountains. So then Wesker's like, all right, I'm gonna accelerate my initial plans, add in what I gotta do here, which lead stars and get combat data, and I'm gonna sell that data to another company and then go work for them. And then I'm gonna take that money I make, hire soldiers, HCF soldiers from Code Veronica with the night vision goggles, and I'm gonna create my own like military group you know, working for me, and then eventually we're going to take over that company and, and be in control of them, which he, he does with Alexa Gioni and uh, and that arms dealer guy in Resident Evil 5, and that's how he becomes in charge of, you know, Neo Umbrella or whatever. But uh, BE, I'm curious. Um, could it be kind of like a General Electric thing, like BE instead of GE? I mean, it could be, it could stand for a company and not a person. It's possible. Um, but I think when he says our company, you know, is you know, whatever, that's kind of like the organization that Wesker referred to in the first one. So originally the plan was that Wesker was going to, you know, die, come back, be kind of superhuman, work for this new company. And as soon as Birkin was finished with the G virus, that he was going to like, they, he was going to come join them. Like they had, they had plans to, you know, get Birkin in, um, And the more I study the history and lore of Res Evil, it's it's pretty interesting. The th the themes that keep coming back, like betrayal and uh, friendship and things, it's it's pretty neat actually. So hopefully my videos shed some light on some of those more confusing aspects of uh, of everything. Can I jump down there? No, I will jump down there soon. In the 90s, uh, people thought GE was involved with nuclear weapons. Oh, you like you? Oh, I see. Like yeah, right. Well, I think they were. I mean, well, maybe it's just because people thought that. <laughs> I thought they were, too. Um, so, yeah, it could be. But seeing how most of the emails come from, sing like, a an individual, I feel like it's not, like, it's, it's, because it says sender, you know, it, it, it's not like you, if you get an email from someone at Microsoft, it's, it's, it's going to say so-and-so at Microsoft. It's not going to say Microsoft emailed you. So, so yeah, that's where I kind of thinking maybe it's, it's like an individual. Ooh. All right. We got four gunpowderies. All right. So if we mix this, we have that. And that's Magnum Ammo. Sweet. So this is where we're going to need all of our ammo at. Okay. Here we go. That there. That there. Gonna bring it all, because last time we got our ass kicked. Magnum ammo can go here. 
What's that? High caliber handgun ammo? Is that for... I think that goes there. Um, did any of the other names in the emails connect to other games, like the director they mentioned? I don't know. I'm going to need more time to look, because, like I said, but when I got to this point tonight and when I got here last night, I was very tired. <laughs> so my brain is not firing on all cylinders. But I, when I edit these and I go through the footage again, I will start cross-comparing them. The names didn't jump out at me, but... Uh, when they say the director, I'm think I think they're referring to Oswald E. Spencer on that one. But then again, there's different directors for different locations, so it's hard it's hard to say. It really is. The problem is, is these people like Umbrella, they they're so secretive and stuff that when the writers write these files, they literally make them very vague, and you're just like, uh, could you be a little less vague? Because I'm a continuity stickler, and I want to know what the What's going on? Huh. That was easy. So. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. I like that. So this is this is true A and B stuff. Uh, Claire came in here and put that pendant in, and then boom, he just that's awesome. He just came in. He's like, oh, oh, there's a sample. That's I can get behind that. That's pretty funny, actually. And of course, you know it's not going to be easy because you got this going now. Who is that going to come in and shoot them? Because that would kind of make no sense right now. Of course, on their side, they see a net more as a villain. Oh shit! What the? What does she shoot him with? I want that weapon. I'm gonna try to lay down again, have to be up in a few hours. I hope you all want to get some sleep. Thanks for letting me hang out. Hey, hang out anytime, Lonely. Thanks for being in here. Have a good night, get some sleep. Appreciate you being here and supporting us. Okay, that was a simple thing. That simple thing was awesome, but explain the roof was repaired and then broke again. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, you're right. It's like, the, it immediately contradicts itself. It's like, hey, here's a, an A-B scenario thing. And then it immediately undoes that. You're like, yeah. So you're right. Right from the start. Here we go. You don't get away that easily. <laughs> Why even throw the syringe? Why waste the strength and the energy to throw it away? Just so she can pick up the bottle or see it. William, what have you done? So he did it in that room. So where the f he jumped? We made this monster. Whatever. We made the G virus, but we never intended this. Spin it any way you want. You're still responsible. Oh, oh. I gotta say, this creature is not very good at stabbing people. It didn't stab through the subway train to kill Ada. Didn't stab her there. It threw her. So I'm kind of curious why it has a big claw. If it's not gonna, if it's only gonna stab me in a boss fight. That's funny. Claire was like, "I'll fight the guy." Leon's like, "What are you doing?" Here comes the Code Veronica music. Damn. I forgot I had the Magnum equipped, so I was like, ah, fuck it, I'll just keep shoot I'll just keep using it.
I thought, oh shit, I thought I could fucking. I thought I could have, uh. Because th yesterday we shot. I think it's because we had the flame rounds. We shot his arm and. Dude, my aim is fucking sucking on this one. Okay. Come on, hot dog. Yeah, we're gonna die. I always miss that second eye. I, the back eye is the one that always gets me. Dude, run! What the? F I wish there was a dodge. eyeball right there. There we go. So we gotta do it one more time now. What other cool weapons do I have? The shotgun? Did he miss me? Nice. Shit. Hitting L1 to block, like RAC. Yeah, me too, right? Shit. Do I have any health? No. Of course not. See, that's not how I want to beat this guy, with with like no hits left and no ammo. I want to do better, <laughs> so it kind of feels like a shit victory. Cause, uh, well, I guess there's still items we can pick up. Um, I also keep hitting menu to change weapons. Yeah, I think that what I think what was it a. Uh, Onimusha. I was playing Onimusha, and every time I hit uh, the left joystick, it uh, it would bring up the map. I'm like, what a dumb. Because when you panic, you press down that left joystick to run and like move, right? Um, to dodge and stuff. And I just kept bringing up the menu. I'm like, what a dumb placement for the menu. I can under I understand you can change the controls on that game, but why is the default one? the left joystick <laughs> for the menu. It's makes zero sense. It's, it makes no sense at all. Alright, I'm just running around real quick, see if there's any other health things. I think I have one I mean we wasted so much health in there. We could have done that battle a lot better. Um please be a, a spray. Nope.
Um, so yeah, this is why I do separate saves. Save it 21 times. Um, oh, 21 slots. Yeah, yeah. I do. I did like 10 for each character. Um, so I, I overlap, you know, a little bit. Leon looks like a badass <laughs> with that one sleeve ripped off, shoulder patched up. RE7, when it came out, only gave five slots, but was updated with some patch at some point. Um, yeah, I remember that, because that was one of the reasons why I didn't create too many multiple saves, was for that, because re that restriction. And that upset me, because I think there was one time where I was screwed, and I basically had to, like, melee my way through, like, a whole area of the boat or something I can't remember but there was like somewhere I was like I have no weapons to fight with um okay last chance at something here we go mixed herb blue and red herb you know what I'm gonna take them cause maybe we'll find a green herb to share them with knife perfect I think that's the ammo for. Yep, so we'll do this. Oh, we got what? Hello, health spray. I didn't know that you were in there. That's very nice of you. Thanks for being where I need you to be. Thanks for being a team player. So we'll. We got that. Combine. I need to save the game over 100 times to make it easy for me to make videos, so 21 slots is not cutting it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that way you can go back to any point in the game and get, like, a fresh take on something. Um, I, I understand that completely. Yeah, you're right, 21 is is not enough, especially for this game. Um, all right. Why equip? Why? I don't understand. There we go. Is there a save in here? No. Okay. Sorry, not hunk. She is the liar. I was just thinking about you. That makes two of us. So yeah, now I I like Ada even less. She totally was She was like, Alright, you go, get the sample, bring it back to me. Who is she really working for? Wesker? She, yes, she is working for the company that Wesker sold Umbrella out for in Resident Evil 1. So 
um, she worked for them all along originally uh, when she was getting close to John she was from Chicago that's where she met John at and uh, John transferred to Raccoon City and worked for the Arclay Mountain facility and then uh, Ada was trying to like get closer to him I don't think you can um, and uh, but she was working for this rival organization and her goal was basically to use John to get a sample of the T-Virus and then when that went south oh whoa oh oh there goes there's the virus So you can kind of understand, I understand Annette's rationale and her choice making in this way more than I did in the first one. In the first one she just came across like this, she's kind of psychotic, she just loved her husband and and uh, was upset everyone was trying to steal his virus and just didn't want them to take his virus or his work. But in this one she feels more like, hey what we created was way worse than we thought and I don't want it to get out there. She has a little more of a heart to her. And I think the events of Claire's campaign helps bring that heart in her out more. So I kind of liked Annette more in this one. Like, I understood her more. And then Ada, I, th I think... I think, like, Wesker or someone... Like, I think Wesker catches her or something. Or she has her little grappling gun or something. She finds the sample of the virus down below. It didn't somehow didn't get crushed or landed somewhere safe or something. I can't remember. That bullet hole graphic was awesome. Yeah, that was really good. We did a good job. Remember in the first Resident Evil 2 where the, the, the lab was just falling apart and then it just fe like pipes fell and crushed on that <laughs> like out of nowhere. Um, yeah, that was funny. Super funny. Nope. All right. Uh, she landed on the moon bounce from Leon's party. That's right. I think Deadpool did that in his video game where like he just like uh, he sets up a bounce house at the beginning of the game and then at the end of the first level like an hour later or half an hour later you get blown out of the window with your your target and you fall into the sewer and land on the bounce house and he's like ha ha he's like I set that joke up 30 minutes ago <laughs> the pipe death is the greatest death in video game history it's pretty awesome because it just comes out of nowhere and her the way her the pixelated body falls it's, it's insane oh yes what up? I think I missed that our first time through here So see, it's just it's it's just random, like how they he's like, oh look, it's Claire, and she just happens to be next to a monitor. You're down here too. Yeah, the whole place is coming. But if they had walkies, it would have just been much easier to do that in a scene with walkies, where he's just like, hey, and she's like, hey, I I hear a countdown behind you. I'm I hear a countdown behind you. Well, hey, get to the bottom floor. There's a train down here. Claire, you still there? Because then this thing of this, where it's like, the, you're breaking up, you're breaking up. It's like, why even do this scene then? If they're not going to actually exchange information, why, why even do this scene? Damn it! More knives. Oh, what up? What's up, danger? All right. Two knives. We got everything, right? The lightning hawk? Are we going to need that? I mean, are we going to find any bullets for it? All right. I know we normally stop streams at the one and a half hour marker or less, but... 
we're so close to the ending. I don't feel like ending this stream just to finish the last like 20 minutes, so. Kelly holds that gun. But any other gun, he uh, he holds like a professional. No, I don't. Is that another who herb? They give you way less green herbs in this game, and they totally load you up with the uh, blue and red. That's why I thought I was gonna see like spiders. I was like, oh, I'm gonna see a ton of spiders. Look at all these blue herbs they're giving me. for the final boss. I'm assuming we're going to get one more because because I think we did in the main game. We had uh, we fought him like on the, the car that goes up and down. That's why I hate um, streaming Res Evil. It always seems like there is just 10 minutes left and it turns into an hour. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is very true. Shit! Behind me too. What? Luck. So wait, he wasn't ripped in half. I'm I'm so confused. I was so excited to see what happened to him after he got ripped in half in the first game. And you're telling me he? You're telling me he just is like the, the events of the first. Half of the game, the leap of the Claire didn't happen. Gotta keep going. I need to know how Mr. X got to the RPD. Why wouldn't they have a cutscene for that? It's so. It's you're right. You're right. Absolutely. Uh, again, the amount of stuff they, the amount of focus they put on certain things, and then the the stuff they got lazy with, storytelling wise, is astounding to me. Because I'm like, why would you? Is why would you choose this corner to cut? Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So I'm with you on that one. What's that? Why did they even cut him in half? They just made him look dead. Now he's magically healed, unless they are more than one. I mean, that's possible, but again, show a cutscene to establish that, you know? Like, uh... Yeah, I felt like there's a lot of things where I'm like, storytelling-wise, I'm like... If you've played the original game, you know why it's there. But if you're new to this, you're like, what is that thing? You're like, you read one file and it says, oh, the tyrant was programmed to hunt all witnesses. And you're like, uh, okay. I thought the tyrant was sent by Umbrella to get a sample of the G virus. Oh, so we don't fight Birkin here? Because we fought Birkin and players. Oh, shit. We gotta fight the tyrant. Why did I even bring the shotgun if I don't have shotgun ammo? You kidding me? I only have... I used all the magnum ammo on the... I 
got hit by the rock. Not not even Dwayne the Rock Johnson, just the rock. Yeah, this is going really well. What the fuck? He jumped? Did I just die in one hit? I sure fucking did. Wow. Is there no way to dodge that? Because I was in mid-run when it happened. Wow. Well, Leon is new to the situation, so you're in the same shoes as him. Is there idea of is there idea of immersion? Oh, I see. Yeah, I guess. Then why didn't you find a videotape that showed the helicopter transporting him, like, crash and he get out or something, you know, or whatever? They always seem to find a way to squeeze in stupid videotapes. Right, I'm going to get rid of this since we're not even going to use it. I used all my freaking magnum ammo on that first fight. I mean, we could probably beat him. With what we have, it's just gonna be a, a bitch. Yeah, like you said, Barry. I thought it was gonna be like 20 minutes. No, nope. I'm gonna be fighting this guy for like a fucking hour and a half. I think all cutscenes involve the character. You never saw any flashbacks or things around the RPD. Um, that's true. Well, except for that one where Annette just did it. She, she told Leon what happened to Birkin, and that was a cutscene of Birkin injecting himself. Um, so that was kind of a flashback, in a way. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to use tapes, you know, because I kind of like the use of tapes to show what Punk's team went through. It's like, yeah, okay, that's kind of cool, but... Good to know that stopped him. Damn. We got thirteen bullets left. Fuck, I had the wrong thing equipped. Fucking knife. Wow, that bought me four seconds of jack shit. Oh, we're just supposed to survive for like two minutes, aren't we? What? <laughs> what? Oh. I was going to say, no, like, Leon, take this. Wow. 
potato leaves. Yep. All right, that, that turned out pretty well. Wow. So I guess it wasn't even really a matter of wounding him. Oh, shit, on me. Any bullets over here? And cheap out on me now, game? Go, oh, dude, run. Can we get out of here? Dude, you know that killed his shoulder there, man. Pulling his weight up like that? Ugh. Damn, homie. In high school, he was the man, homie. Here we go now, the, the real ending, where I have no bullets, I have 14 handgun bullets and a bunch of flame rounds. Level 3? Didn't we get a level 4 clearance? Or th no, that only opened because of uh, Ada. The funny thing about Jack Leon is that he, the face model for him weighs about 100 pounds. You're right. You're right. He's, he, I noticed that in a couple cutscenes. Where his, I'm like, his face is like a swimmer's body face, but his, his body type is, maybe it's the Leon? padding from the we made it. vest? Just like I, said we would. I don't know, his arms look a little too big, this? I agree. This is Sherry. Okay. When Sherry was mutating, that was cool, like her eye was like, the was that? things coming around her eyes, that looked oh, crazy. Take care of Sherry. Hey, can you give me all your weapons? Because when I beat the game of Claire, she had a ton of shit on her. So, why don't you give me that? Why don't you give me all that? What is one? Can we do anything with one? Like, we can't... It has to combine, right? Well, oh, that's not ominous at all. Alright, we got three rockets. That's good. Store that. I think we get enough for this. You haven't seen this yet. No, I have not. I don't know what I don't know. I just assumed because Resident Evil 2 had this, um, the original one, that uh, that this happened. But I have not seen this yet. Plus, I think Claire's campaign ends with Leon coming in the train, and they hear the banging, and they both look back, and and that's it. So, no, I have not seen this yet. I haven't seen any videos on it. Um, what another knife? Jesus. That's cool. This looks a little bit like the train from uh, the movie. Whoa. Thank goodness. Thank goodness they give you that rocket launcher. Whoa. Now that's... <laughs> looks like Jack Baker almost. Like the brain bug from uh, 
Starship Troopers. Oh, they shove that like needle up in it. I tried to knife kill this boss, it didn't go well. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, I like that they did that little the eye dilates when the explosion wraps around it, kind of like the original. That's kind of cool. Oh, hello there, sunshine. So, are you guys, like, boyfriend and girlfriend? No. We're just... Uh, well, we actually just met last night. <laughs> yeah. That would have been one hell of a first date, though. Yeah, you have no idea. Look! He might be able to give us a ride. Huh. Maybe it's not just the city. Get Cherry out of here. What's that all about? So, is it over? I don't know. But if it's not, we'll stop it. Whatever it takes. Yeah, you're damn right we will. As long as we stick together, we'll be fine. Come on. And then they don't see each other again until a CG hey, movie that takes place five years later. Uh. <laughs> we can get a puppy. And we don't see Sherry again. <laughs> well, Leon doesn't see Sherry again until she's like 20. I like the song. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny because it's typical for Resident Evil games to end with like a helicopter shot, but I always liked two because it didn't have that. It wasn't like you know the team escaping on a helicopter or in Code Veronica where they escape on a jet um, or a plane or whatever. Um, you have like them, them actually just like walking, but I like that they actually put in like I'm like why did they get off the train? Okay, it stopped at a station and. You know, whatever. Um, so that was kind of neat that they had that in the background. But what's up with the guy flicking them off? Like, what is? I don't. Know, I don't what does that buy you? Thanks for the discussion too, Barry. Thank you for hanging out here. Thanks for sharing my uh, uh, video the other day. I appreciate that. Everybody else who's here, um, Hainsey for the subscription, and uh, also um, um, Grifter for the twenty-five dollar uh, monthly subscription. Again, thank you again, sir. We will be. We hit 500 followers on here, so I will be dressing up as a nun and singing Sister Act 2 songs when we play a game. We'll probably schedule it for like next week. Um, so thanks to, to Joe After Work for rating me and getting me like five new subscribers, our followers, so that way we could do that. So uh, yeah, so we'll play that. It'll be like an hour. We'll probably play South Park because we still have to finish South Park, Fractured Butthole. Um, we have to finish the two Spider-Man DLCs. And we got to finish God of War, which was donated to us by a really wonderful person who worked on the game, and I really appreciate that. So we were going to go back to God of War very soon as well. The Sister Act bits are still going on nice. <laughs> you got to get back in the habit. Dude, I will always, always get back in the habit. Um, so yes, thank you. Uh, yes, the Sister Act stuff has not gone anywhere. Uh, but I can't do a stream like that late at night while my roommate's home because I don't want to keep them up and prevent them from going to work, so we'll do it one day during the daytime. Anyway, you guys have been great. Where's Barry? Everyone who popped in, lonely for uh, hanging out with me for the past two nights, keep me awake. Uh, John Malie, everyone else who popped in, everyone who subscribed and donated, I appreciate you very much. I'll see you in the future. Peace. This open window can lead somewhere or nowhere. It's up to you. What do you mean, who is this? It's Chris. Why won't you believe me?